Mind Fortitude Show. All right, folks. Well, welcome to the Mind Fortitude Show. I'm here today with Candace P. Smalls. She's a published author. She's also a nurse and a verified and certified wellness coach and holistics coach. So, uh, Candy, welcome to the show. And um, I first wanted to open up with asking you, what does the term wellness mean to you? Thank you. First, I want to say thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm super psyched excited to be here today. So thank you so much. So okay. wellness, wellness to me is, it's all about mind, body, and soul. So if you break it up into several different categories, it's about your, your health. It's about your, your mental health, you know, having that strength in your brain to be able to function through your everyday activities. It's about something that you do for your body, physical, to exercise, to work out eating clean, eating healthy, and having a healthy environment around you with people you socialize with, whether it's career, school, or just life in general, and just being an all-around good person for yourself. So that's what wellness is. Okay. And so what was one of the things that inspired you to get into the health and wellness field? I know you're a, a certified nurse. So yes. what was one of the things that um, inspired you to uh, choose that career path? Well, getting into nursing, I always like to help people. So I started off with helping uh, my grandmother when she had got diagnosed with esophageal cancer and seeing my family take care of her at the time of need. And I really inspired and inspired to become a nurse. And my family is full of nurses, my mother, my aunt, my grandmother was a nurse also. So I kind of fell into those footsteps of being a caregiver and being a, a, a nourisher and a nurturer. However, I was really good at taking care of other people. It's something that I've done at the hints of being a nurse. Um, but I started lacking of taking care of myself. So I lacked with the self-care. And about three years ago, I was eating all my emotions and hidden traumas and stressors. And I became almost 200, 200 pounds. So within that, I realized that I had to make a decision for my life. I wanted to be healthy and continue to help people, but to help myself also. So that's when I started to um, becoming a, a health coach to go to school and get trained to help other women like me that were eating through their emotions and pain and needed someone to uh, help them find and shine light on the darkness parts of their life. Right. And so I hear you say, talking a lot about emotions, what are some of the emotions that you feel like trigger emotional eating? And what are the, some, some of the things that you turn around, some of these cycles that you broke in order to uh, get healthy and lose the weight? Well, with eating the emotions, so within, within myself, I was having like, um, what I say, I call it, it's mindless eating. So just eating subconsciously, not even being aware that you're, you're eating within not tuning into yourself and not even being hungry. So you can go on different emotions. So it can be happy or sad or stressed. Um, and then just having any one of those emotions and just eating. So not even realizing it could be like autopilot. So for example, it could be sitting on the couch and just watching, watching a show and just eating and then realize, say, oh, I ate all the chips. Like, wow, I didn't remember eating it. So just mindless, being not even aware of those eating. So different things would come up with, with trigger. And sometimes the triggers wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know I would be triggered. I would just be living life and it's just like, oh, I'm having emotion. And just like, oh, I'm bored. It's something to do. It's nothing to do. Let me just have it. Go into the refrigerator and look and see what's in the refrigerator or have it nighttime, go into the pantry and, and raid the pantry, look in there, just something to do. So that was, that was the beginning stake of just um, not being aware and, you know, subconsciously just eating. Right. Because I've also had my own uh, challenges with weight as well, like um, being almost like 350 pounds at one point. And one of the things that helped me lose like about 60, 70 pounds was um, intermittent uh, fasting. So what are your suggestions on that as a health coach? Do you believe that is something people should try? And how long do you suggest they do it for? Very good. Well, number one, congratulations at that point in your life to be able to, number one, be aware 
um, that something had to change in your life. And number two, do something about it, right? 60 pounds, right. that's a lot, a lot of weight, a lot of yeah. weight. So that's, uh, congratulations on that. Uh, oh, thank fasting, you. yeah, it's really, it's really good. I definitely recommend it. So intermittent fasting, it's really good as far as habitual. So if you say, for example, um, it helps you with the discipline. So if you do, some people don't, for, they'll eat for a period of eight hours, and then it's called 816, and then it'll be a 16 hour period to where they don't. So it could be, for example, a lot of people who do um, health regimens like keto, people do a lot of like high saturated fats, the cheeses, they'll do um, a, keto, a keto diet. So if you stop eating after seven o'clock PM, some people do seven o'clock PM, they'll stop eating, and they'll only drink water, and then their next meal would be noon the next day. It would be like a lunch, lunch time and they'll still eat their breakfast. So what happens to your body at that time is your body is being able to function to be able to release all the stresses in your body, release all that fat and really be able to process. It. So when you do eat those healthy fats, as far as avocados and cheeses and different things, it won't really turn into fat. It would kind of release and then turn into the muscle. So in, intermittent fasting is really, really good. It really helps, um, I say, discipline a lot. It helps with you not um, eating after seven or after eight or whatever your time frame is. So you'll know that okay. Okay, the next meal is going to be, I can eat everything within this time and this time frame, but I can't eat after seven. And usually it's in research and studies shows that if you have your last meal, you eat dinner early, research shows that majority of people lose weight. Because if you eat late, that's when, as you know, your body starts to slow down. And then anything that you gravitate at that time, is going to start breaking down and turning into fat. So I would say if you wanted to do intermittent fasting, and a lot of people have lots of great results. I've even tried it. I loved it. It's really good. I always say moderation is really, it's better. You never want to do something for a long extent of time. Um, it's just not a, a healthy thing. But within moderation and listen to your body because your body your body won't lie to you. Your mind will play tricks on you, but your, your heart might tell you something, but your gut and your body, not going to lie. So you listen to your body. Great. I wanted to shift to something about vaccinations. You know, in, in the news recently, parents who are raising children, they're not believing in vaccinations because, quote unquote, they're saying um, it's causing their children to have autism when they do get the vaccinations at the young, at a young age. So what are your suggestions on like homeopathy, you know, um, basically introducing the disease and the, um, the bacteria to a child? And as far as vaccinating, what do you suggest to parents? Do, is there any scientific data that proves that vaccinations cause autism or Asperger's syndrome? So that's really good. So it's a, it's a, it's a big diverse um, conversation. So there's really no wrong or any right. It's kind of only of what you would suggest. I suggest with my, my patients, I suggest them to get vaccinated and also with their children to be vaccinated. So I'm, I'm for vac vaccination. It's okay. really, really difficult, um, especially state of, of work, California here where I am, and vaccinations are a must for our children to even go to school. So I, I know typically, in particular, a few people that don't get vaccination um, for their children, and it's really difficult. The children stay sick. They're sick all the time. They can't wow. be with other people. Um, and it really hurts with, with education because in the school, it's just a really big thing. So unless you stay home, and yet you homeschool your kids, you know, it's, it's a really difficult process. But when it starts getting to like Asperger's and um, autism, you know, one study will say one thing, another study will say, will say another thing. If you start looking too deep into it, you can start playing tricks on your mind and going deep into it. And it's just kind of like, um, I think it really comes down to preference. So I would say you really want to look into that because I, 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 I gave my son all his vaccinations and, and shots and, you know, but okay. that you want to look deeper into. Okay, great. And so looking into like the holistic uh, living systems, 
you know, I know I heard you said it incorporates the harmony between the body, mind, and the spirit. Yeah. So why do you believe meditation is so helpful? And how do you practice and implement that into your own life? Yes. Yeah, so with uh, meditation, I use a lot of my meditation and I say, you know, meditation with prayer. You know, it's, it's, it's all the same thing as mindfulness to, to be still. A lot of times in life, as we're going through this journey of life, it's fast. It's a lot of commotion. And a lot of the commotion and the fastness and the chatter is starts, it starts within our mind. So it's head to toe. So it's all in our brain. So in order to be able to slow down those nerve pathways and all the activity, electric activity that's going on in our brain, we have to be still. Okay. We have to be still. So that's a part of being mindful. And number one thing is you have to be aware. You need to be aware. And if you're moving so fast throughout the day and through life, you're not going to be able to be calm and be able to, to feel and to hear what it is that we need to do. So with med different between the meditation and the prayers, meditation is you're, you're releasing, you're opening up your mind. You're opening up your mind so you can be still. And with the prayer, it's, it's similar, but we're opening up our mind, we're opening up our heart, and we're asking, you know, for our creator to come into us and to fill us and to give us our answers. So it's all different kind of beliefs on, you know, how you feel. But I practice um, mindfulness and meditation and prayer, you know, several throughout the day, starting from when I wake up in the morning until I, until I go to bed at night, to just be more intentional, mindful, aware, and just be more present within yourself because you have the answers within yourself. And a lot of times we look at other people um, for answers to give us something that they don't even know the answer of, they don't even know. But if we just be still in the moment and just breathe, and a lot of times we're holding our breath, you don't even realize that, you know, through different stressors in life. But if you just breathe and you just be more mindful and you just kind of just tap into yourself and to what it is that we're supposed to do within ourselves, we usually have. Okay, great. And so I wanted to ask you next, what suggestions do you have for people battling like mental illness to live a healthier lifestyle and to combat the uh, symptoms of their psychiatric disorders like bipolar, schizophrenia, ADHD, depression? Um, yes. What are some of the suggestions you have? Well, number one, I just want to say that the mental health stigma is real and mental health is real. And anyone that is suffering through any type of mental health issues or to where they get to the point to where they feel at their lowest and they feel alone and have a void that it's just nothing is filling up to definitely seek uh, medical attention. And it's nothing wrong with having a therapist or a psychiatrist to go speak with someone, um, to have someone that's on a, a neutral party that has nothing to lose or nothing to gain, but just to be able to help them. So I definitely suggest people to do that. And just to know that you are not alone. It's so many people in the world who battle certain things. I work on my mental health daily. Daily for my mental health is a practice for me to make sure that I can, um, behaviors are not triggered and just to be aware of how certain um, situations can make me feel so that I'm not triggered. So I would say to the number one that you are not alone. And, and the good thing is that you're not alone. So when you feel like, why me? Why is this happening to me? You're never going to have, we can ask, we're never going to have those answers of why it is, but definitely seek psych psychiatric help or mental health help. That way you can get your proper diagnosis. And if you need to be on medication, that's okay too. You know, that's okay too. So you're not alone. Okay, great. Great advice. And so I don't want to get too scientific here, but, um, like talking about triggers and stress. So I know from um, taking this recent course in wellness, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that regulates happiness and irrit irritability. So yes. what do you suggest for um, individuals who are just like, like you said, um, fill a void? Like what are some activities they can do besides the... Um, the mental health counseling and meditation like let's say they have a certain habit that may trigger a stress like eating 
or they may uh, decide to drink some alcohol or smoke cigarettes. What are some things you suggest to break those bad uh, decision cycles? Well, I'll share with you. I went to, as an adolescent, I struggled a lot within myself with emotions and just a lot of um, inner trauma that I, that I endured in my lifetime. And I got to a point to where I knew that, you know, I was harming, harming myself, um, self-harming myself. And I said, this is not safe. I need to seek some help. So I, remember, I went to a therapist and I did one session and <laughs> I wanted to be diagnosed. I said, just, just put me on pills. I just put me on some pills. I know I have this chemical imbalance. Just put me on pills. Right. That's just what I, I wanted. And that was not the answer. <laughs> she okay. never went, I never went, fired her, never went back to see a therapist. But <laughs> she told me okay. it didn't make sense to me. It makes sense. Now she said, she said, Candy, she said, when you're starting to feel really, really down and you feel like um, you, you want to, having bad thoughts or you want to harm yourself or you feel like no one's there, no one understands you, she says, before you go to bed, she said, exercise. She said, exercise. And I was like, what? She was crazy. <laughs> like, she has all these certifications on the wall, all this stuff, fix me, help me. She tells me to exercise. But just like you right. said, that dopamine, it releases those, those happy hormones the, the, to get that joy. That's that dopamine. And that comes, you know, throughout the brain. So I would say exercising. It's not a time and you say, oh, I don't want to exercise a lot of work. But listen, it, it's like a, a nerve block. When you exercise, especially like you get up in the morning, you exercise, you feel like without even caffeine, you feel like a rush of you feel high, like you just feel so good. And it's like, it might take you time to get to the gym because you don't want to work out. You don't want to exercise. But when you're exercise, you don't, you're, you don't stress. You're not worrying about finances. You're not worrying about anything because you're just working on those movements. But what's happening into our body, into our brain, you're releasing all that dopamine. And that's what makes you feel good. It makes you, gives you that rush. So I would say definitely to, you feel like, you feel like it's a void. Get to a habit. Work on something to where you work on every day. And it's just habitual. You practice it every single day. Like for me with eating, I know with eating was always a struggle because I was eating for different reasons, different emotions, as I explained earlier, but I would um, organize all of my meals as a habit of meal prepping. So that was something that no matter what, every day as a ritual, every Sunday was a religious, re religious um, um, ritual for me, meal prep. And that was something that I was doing for me, for my mind, for my body, for my soul to help me at those moments where I want to eat something fast or a vending machine or fast food, I would have that. So getting into that habit of doing something for yourself and starting to get that gratitude for yourself to where you matter and find reasons why. You can start for 20 days writing three, every day write down something that you're thankful for, something that you care about for yourself as gratitude. And it takes time. It's a practice. Okay, great. And so um, something new I learned about from also taking this wellness course is uh, laughter therapy. Is this something you're familiar with? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So laughter therapy, it involves like uh, a client watching funny videos and just like releasing all that stress. So why um, and what is your feedback and suggestions on this as a health coach? Why is it so important to have laughter and have a balance of emotions? And that's, isn't this brilliant? If you think back to laughter, you know, it takes me back to uh, Kevin Hart, comedian, laugh at my pain, right? So you think right. laughter is comedy. So one of the things that actually is really good for as a therapeutic regimen is to go to comedy shows or watch comedy, you know, because it kind of tricks out your brain and kind of psychs yourself out to where that laughter is medicine, is medication. And it brings me back to one of the movies, I'm thinking it was um, Robin Williams. And it was, he was at the hospital, he wore the red nose and um, he would go around this hospital and he would dress up, he was a doctor in the movie, he would dress up as, as a clown with the red nose. Right. And he would go and make all his patients that were having like dementia and cancer. And that was like his therapy regimen is for the laughter. So if you think about 
laughter and what it does to your to your body you know it's you're breaking and releasing everything within within yourself you know having that tricking that brain um, regimen cycles to be able to um trigger the frontal lobes of like all your decision making all your balance and you know, all your sensories and to be able to trick your mind to have that um comedy and that laughter and that joy in, in, right. in like that harmony so the therapeutic of comedy that's definitely it's definitely really good you have to just think about it if you put on something to where it makes you sad you have different emotions and it's good to feel those emotions we have several different emotions and it's good to to feel those emotions for example sometimes you you, you want to be sad or you you, you want to cry and you don't want someone to try to cheer you up right you're like i don't want to be mm -hmm. cheered like i just want to sit in this right now and i want to feel it you know right. you know you're sad and someone tries to cheer they try to make a joke and they try to come on come on you're not mad you're like no right. be mad i don't want to laugh right now <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it's okay it's okay to feel those emotions and it's okay to sit in those emotions you know but within moderation you don't want to sit in it too long you don't want to feel it too long you say okay this is enough i felt it you know now i need to move on to something else you, you know kind of move past it tuck it away for another time right so just don't like you said everything in moderation and just don't dwell in it just moderation start. feel right. it let yourself let yourself feel it because a lot of times we don't we don't let ourselves feel that emotion we don't let ourselves feel that pain and we try to and kind of get over it so fast or someone says just get over it and it's like well how can i just get over something right now i need to step into it i need to process these emotions feel it and then make that sound decision to where it says okay how is this emotion serving me because you have different emotions we have emotions that come from from fear and we have emotions that come from love so you have to figure out like is this going to this fear is this emotions of anxiety or um something that you're afraid of or of or jealousy or you might have emotions of love to where you feel happy, to where you feel thrilled, to where you feel satisfied. So you wanna check in with yourself, being mindful, being still, and to say, how is this emotion serving me? Right. How is it serving me? And if it's in, if in worry, right? Worry, worry is terrible. Worrying, people worry, it's just, it will eat you alive don't want to worry so then that's when you have to get to yourself and to the core value of yourself and with who your creator is and really touch in because of things that we deal with in the, the human life we we can't endure it. it's too much you have to give it to something else it's something bigger bigger power than 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 us it's bigger than us and so like um I know with Anthony, like a lot of the things he's involved with is art. Yeah. And I hear, I hear with, I know with you as being a health coach, a lot of the things you involve yourself with deal with mindfulness and fitness. Mm -hmm. So what do you believe are some strong social connections that can promote a healthier lifestyle? Like some activities people can participate and you know maybe like a couple of times a week that could bring some of that harmony and balance into uh folks lives well i would number one would say look into yourself to see what is it a passion of you what's a passion of yours so something that you would want to do for you that's something that gives you life so for example my husband um anthony he does um Therapy, art therapy. So that's something that's a passion of his to pick up the paintbrush, to paint away his painting and to look at different colors and different colors have meaning. So that's a passion of his. Some people might have a passion to where they want to go to a, 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 a Zumba class. They want to, they don't want to exercise, but they want to be around people who are moving and grooving and it's something that brings them life. So you, your passion is going to be something the individual for yours is not from a person next door somebody that you know it's something for you so it might and it might not even be with people that you know it might be around other people like they have different clubs they have hiking groups they have book reading groups they have people who want to go and do boxing 
they have those type of gyms in, in clubs and different things. So you want to look into something that maybe you might want to, um, it could be a group of, of people who are like-minded around you that you just want to come around and kind of brainstorm, you know, something that you want to do that's a passion within yourself. So you something that you have to create. It's, it's lots of different things that you can do. Um, to put yourself around other like-minded people like yourself that enjoy different things because um, that's healthy for you for you too. Okay, great. And then lastly, I wanted to ask you like with mindfulness and wellness being something so like modern, what do you believe are some of the things we could do within the African American community to just promote uh, this tactic of wellness and implement it without you know, it's seeming so, you know, people, when, when they see a, something new, they get kind of leery of it, kind of scared of it. So what do you think some, uh, what do you think is a mindset people could have to be open to uh, these new therapies? And well, that's, exa that's exactly it, is uh, the mindset of just being open. Every day, things are changing, life is changing, and you have to look at certain things to where, how is that working out for you? Is that working out pretty good? It works out for you? Okay, so you don't need to change. And majority of the time, a lot of time things are not working and it hasn't worked. So you want to try out different things. So you want to be open-minded to certain things and, and to research and kind of look into it. And it's, it's nothing wrong with being, you think of mindful, mindfulness in the opposite of being mindful is mindless. So, you know, you think of it. So mindful is something you're aware I'm assertive of mindless is something that you're just doing without even knowledge that you're even doing, it's kind of like being careless. So it's not for everyone. Everyone has a different aspect to it, but I would just say just to be open minded and just kind of use just like at the end of the day when you, you go home from a, a long day of work and you, your back is, is hurting, is, is heavy, and you have to open up that backpack that's on your back, that saddle that you've been carrying around all day, and you need to open it up every day, every, every night. And you need to look into that bag and see what is yours and what's not yours. You say, Ooh, this was, this is interesting. Pull that out the bag. That's, that stress wasn't mine. That's not my problem. Pull this out the bag. That does not belong to me. You pull something else back. Oh, I like this. I think I'll keep this for another day. Right. So that's just kind of same thing with just being mindfulness and just holisticness and just health and just wellness overall. It's very diverse. Pick what you like out of it, kind of create it and make it your own. And the things that you don't like, leave that for somebody else. But just being yeah. open-minded. Okay, cool. Well, I wanna uh, thank you for spending time with the Mind Fortitude show today. And um, wanted to open the floor uh, to uh, any current projects you're working on. I know you released a book. So you want to tell folks some more about that and how they can connect with you and uh, purchase your products? Yes, definitely. So you can contact me on www.nursecandysmalls.com and that'll take you directly to my website. I have, I'm the author of Mindful Meal Prep. It's clean, delicious recipes for weight loss. So it's a all the healthy meals that I've created into my kitchen where I've lost over 50 pounds and kept the weight off and kept my emotions and trigger eating under wraps and control. So if you click onto my website, it'll take you right to my book, which is on Amazon also too. And then you can add on to my free VIP list where you'll get all updates on different um, recipes and different um, verbiage of different things that I have, workshops that's coming up. So my newest project that I have is a vision launch workshop that I have coming up on Monday. And it's really great. It's all about personal development and, you know, having that 2020 vision. And what does that vision look like for you as we step into this, 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 this new decade and kind of getting in control of our goals and setting us that way we can set ourselves free. So it's really, really exciting. And I just opened up a new nonprofit organization, which is called Fit butterfly innovation. And what that is, is for women to be able to be heard and seen and believed into where I facilitate around our community here in the Bay Area in California with these workshops that I, I facilitate for free of women in the community of all different diverse backgrounds that have suffered with 
trauma or domestic violence or whatever it is that they, they needed to overcome in their life, just kind of come together in a safe space and kind of have those open, open conversations, you know, to be believed and to be seen. And it's very, very powerful. Okay, great. And for anyone who would uh, like to consult with you, like as a health coach, how can they reach out to you? Is that the uh, same website or? Yes. So through the nursecandysmalls.com where you can, I'm also on Instagram at nursecandy underscore health educator. And you can reach out to me. You can send me a message as well and contact me or you can go onto the website and love to hear from you. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It was a, a real blessing to have this conversation with you and um, just hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, thank you so much. Talk with you soon.